Do I click live? No. No, no, you don't have to click anything from your end. Okay, John, we're live. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. Um, welcome to this uh, new way that um, we're uh, doing this. So if you have, uh, it's been, it's in Zoom. So the neat thing is I'm able to see you. Hello, Misha. I'm able to see you and you should be able to hear me. Um, I like this. It's, we'll see if you like this. So I see um, Misha's connecting to audio. Lorena, I see Lorena, Yulia. Okay, so probably give you a couple of minutes to start coming on. Uh, I believe you're also seeing this in Facebook, which is great. So yesterday we spent time with um, George, George Politis, and hello, Lorena. Um, so we spent time with uh, George Politis, and he saw, showed some very interesting things if you were uh, not able to join yesterday. Um, he showed the moon glow and how the moon glow um, comes to its three different pigments, the anthraconoid red, the viridian, and the ultramarine blue. So he played around with that. He also played with cascade green. Um, George is a, a master of using the Primatex to be able to get rust. He talked about how his underlying uh, paint that he uses, his go-to paint, was either the quinacridone gold or the um, Aussie red gold. So if you missed that, you might want to watch it. It was very, very interesting. Um, hello, Giovanni. Hello, Letizia. Okay, so today we're going to look at the um, we're going to look at the Primatex. Welcome, good to see both of you. Today we're going to look at the the Primatex. There's 36 Primatex. We're going to go over about half of them today. So what I envision, and I really want to hear your feedback, is that on Thursday we're we're going to next week this will change. On Thursday, I'm going to give a presentation. I'll talk about either sticks or masking fluid or something. And then Friday, an artist will be on, and they'll show you from an artistic practical sense how they use it. So if you have questions, um, those would be bring, good to bring up because that helps them to answer your questions. Um, at some point, I'll bring Giovanni, who does the sticks. I'm going to do the stick session. Giovanni will be able to assist me in answering about the sticks how they're used, show you tips and techniques. So that's kind of where I want to go with it. One day, um, talk about the, the how it's made, what it does, and show you that. And then the next day, from a practical standpoint. So I think everybody now must be on uh, Facebook, because I see Lorena, and I see Misha, and Yulia. And right now, that's, that's five of you. So OK, so I'm going to point this down. I'm also going to move to my new space over the weekend here in Seattle. I'm sure where you're at too. Here it's 100 degrees here Fahrenheit, unbelievably hot. So I'm going to be moving down to the new space this weekend. Let me point this down. I'll get more sophisticated. So we're going to be looking at the the Primatex today right here. I circled the ones. There was a question yesterday about uh, when George was talking about layering. Um, about half of the Primatex are transparent. So they actually layer quite well. Um, the rest, for the most part, are semi-transparent. So the Primatex get their name because they come from minerals. So they're derived from it. This is green appetite. I'm going to paint it out, but I thought I would show you. And then if there's something special you want to see, please let me know. I'll be reading your messages on the screen here. So this is green appetite. The interesting thing is, is minerals aren't perfect. They're imperfect because there's other elements inside of them. And because there's different weight, size, and or shape, you get this really interesting granulation. So this feature right here is called granulation. And you'll get that whether you use cold press paper or hot press paper. Cold press paper, it'll follow the valleys. 
On hot pressed paper, it'll be more radial, like a raindrop hitting that goes out. That's what will happen on hot pressed paper because there's no, um, no real, it's such a flat surface on the hot press, but it will granulate. Granulating colors granulate is what they do. It's kind of the beauty of them. This is garnet. Garnet is less granulating because the garnet actually is, um, has less impurities in it. And that's a garnet. So that's a crystal. Um, let me show you. So it's actually, it's, it's, it's a quite large crystal that can be any shape, any size, but it's very perfect. If we, if we knock this and cut this in half or hit it, you can see it's a crystal. Um, we would see it's very, very orange in its, in its color. Quite beautiful, make really nice jewelry. This is pipestone. Pipestone get its, gets its name. It's, 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 it's kind of a clay material. Um, and it gets its name, it comes from Minnesota. It's called Minnesota Pipestone. And they made peace pipes out of it. And the neat thing is they could see um, travel of ancient people because they would find pipes, et cetera, in, in, for example, Central or South America. And because it comes from the US, they knew there was travel routes. And it all comes back to artists, um, creative people were using what was around them and minerals were around them. They could find ochres and sienas in riverbeds. Um, they had um, many, for example, in Minnesota, they had um, hematites, all types of hematites, which we'll be looking at probably today. So hematite, which is iron ore, it's very beautiful. There's all types of hematite, hematite violet, hematite. Um, I see Misha on, online. Um, and we have uh, bauxite, and that comes from, comes from Russia. So it's found everything, they're found all over the world. This is another oxide, and it's bloodstone. This is bloodstone. You can see the really awesome granulation. So when we process these, we process the mineral, all the Primatex we do ourselves. Um, it's, it's how not to, how to not destroy the crystal. So the one thing you don't want to do is destroy the crystal, because if you destroy the crystal, you just you destroy the vibrancy. It's hard for you to see that, but it has, it's just a beautiful green. Now this is just, um, uh, this is kind of what I like to use. It's, it's, it's not beautiful. So for beautiful, it'd be used for the jewelry, the jewelry trade. So I can buy pieces that the jewelry trade doesn't use. Um, and I like being able to repurpose. Okay, so with that, let's try some out. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to try to read, let me see your chats here. There we go. I'm going to read your chats and I believe I can also hear you. So let's, let's, let's look at some. So I picked out 18 for us to look at and then we'll do the 18 either, um, next time or we'll look at some some sticks next time i kind of want to change it up so um, you're seeing the most amount of things possible yeah so misha's online right now as is giovanni and they both do realist painting among other things um, so they might tend not to use granulating colors. Um, and that's, it's beautiful. It's really more of a choice of what try, what you're trying to create with your artwork and therefore what you want to use. Step by step with you, John. Yes. 
So Giovanni's done some uh, uh, some beautiful work when he was in New York and used some granulated colors, quite beautiful. He's also done realist paintings. Misha, who's watching, does beautiful realist paintings of cars and of uh, strawberries with chocolate. They're they're beautiful. It's almost like you could eat them. So uh, both very very good artists. Okay, so this this is one of the most granulating colors. This is green appetite. This is green appetite. And it just, just is such a granulated color. I'm so fast. Hello, Hussein. Hello, Linda. I'm glad you could come on. This is Tiger's Eye Genuine. The burnt Tiger's Eye, so I'll show you that. So this is Tiger's Eye. It's a semi-precious, um, it's used to make cabochons, it's used to make rings. It's a very, very, very pretty mineral. And then if we put this into the furnace, take it up to 800 to 1200 degrees, we can change the oxidation state and it turns this beautiful red. So this is gonna be, this is burnt tiger's eye, which is right here. And we also have tiger's eye. Hello, Lisa. Thank you for joining yesterday. And today. This is Yavapai. Yavapai. And Yavapai um, comes from Yavapai County. My father uh, retired in Arizona, and this is from Arizona. Yavapai County um, is very close to the Grand Canyon. So it has this um, slight orange to it. So this is from Yavapai County. This next one is the Minnesota Pipestone. I think it's a, it's a, it's a very, I think it's a really interesting color. Sketching five. I made myself a mini palette of granulated colors. I use, I use most really useful. That, that's, that's fantastic. So that's the Minnesota Pipestone. And that's what the Minnesota Pipestone looks like. I found the Minnesota Pipestone when I was in Minnesota and there's a state park and I saw um, a gentleman making uh, peace pipes and I talked to him for a while and there was a, a lot of the um, dust where he had been carving and I asked him, can I have some of that? He said, you can take as much as you want. So I took it and I went home and Ron and I played with it and we really liked the color. This is mummy bauxite. So mummy bauxite, this comes from Russia. It's a really pretty color.
So mummy bauxite. Hello, Angela. It's, I think it's too high. So you can see the green appetite here. It's, it's very green in front of me, a little washed out on the screen, but it's very green here. It really granulates well, as does the, um, the Tiger's Eye Genuine. So the more imperfect they are, the more granulation they have, which is really So if you happen to be watching on Facebook and you can actually come over to Zoom, um, it just makes it easier for certainly for me to see your, your questions um, and actually see you. So, so as they say on some of the stations, watch what you do because the world is watching. You're all live. I know for some of you, it's, it's very late at night. So thank you for joining. Thank you for spending your, your time with me today. I appreciate it. It's actually probably two of the, the I love what I do. I, I, I love meeting with my staff. They're fantastic people. And I will tell you, I have a last meeting with you. Yes, somebody asked a question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have, ask a question, can you wave your hand that way? I can, I can see you. So now we're going to see blood stump. So with the Primatex, <coughs> what you can see from time to time is the gum arabic. There's such heavy pigments that gum arabic that is free, free gum arabic can come to the top. You can just, you can just either put it back in, which you don't have to, or you can just discard it. The pigment will hold on to the amount of gum arabic that it needs, so you don't have to worry about that. So what we're going to look at now, I can tell you ahead of time what we're going to look at. We're going to look at, um, this is going to be, we're going to look at Piemontite. We look at Bloodstone Genuine, Tiger's Eye, Black Tourmaline, um, Red Fuchsite, and Perprite. John, this, this watch with you, me with you. <laughs> oh, awesome. Very, that's interesting. Yours are so, yours, yours are, look like what it looks like on my paper. Yeah. I don't know how, those are very nice. Yeah, those are, that's what I'm seeing on my paper. But when I look at my <coughs> photo on there, it's nowhere as green as yours. But here, it's really green. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. So as we have the artists on Friday, please bring your work as well, because we're going to flip and look at some of your work if you have it. Um, I really want it to be as interactive as you would like it to be. So this is the bloodstone, and the bloodstone is an iron oxide. And you can see how fast that bloodstone is going to granulate really granulates fast, quite beautiful. So the next one is Tiger's Eye Genuine. Tiger's Eye Genuine. And I'm going to see, I'm going to put some here. 
move this over so you see it. So there's the tiger's eye genuine. I'm going to put a little bit right here next to. So this right here is the burnt tiger's eye. And this is the tiger's eye genuine right here, right there. I'm almost out. So burnt tiger's eye, tiger's eye genuine. Okay, this is black tourmaline, black tourmaline. Black tourmaline. And this is black tourmaline. So you can see the crystals. Black tourmaline. We get this from, this is from South America. It's pretty big. Hello, Raffaele. Hello, Joe, Joe Aubrey. Okay. So the next one is actually fuchsia, but I'm going to do that one after I do perprite. And the reason I'm going to do that one afterwards is the um, fuchsia is loaded with mica. Fuchsia is loaded with mica. And so I just want to, I have a separate water source for it right here, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it after I do the perprite. So I'm going to change. Now, yesterday, what George was talking about, and I, I'm sure each artist is different. How you do it might be uh, might be different. George does most of his wet into wet. So George does most of his wet into wet. And I think that's the beautiful thing about um, uh, hearing other artists. It's what I notice most about um, about watercolors, probably because uh, most a lot of watercolors are in groups, is how much they share. And they share different ideas, different different things they've learned. So it's it's really um, it's a very sharing um, medium. I don't know if you've noticed that, but I've noticed that um, everywhere I travel. So this is perprite, perprite. This is what the perprite looks like. Let me show this to you. So you can see right there. See how that's purple? Let me see if I can get that light on there. It's, it's, it's here in front of me, it's very purple. Um, but you can kind of see it. So perprite is the mineral. Ite, I T E, so um, hematite. Per bright, IT just means mineral. Okay, so now we're going to look at the. Now let's look at the. The red fuchsia. Um, George's presentation from yesterday is online, so if you missed it, you might want to look at it. It's it's very very interesting. He did two paintings just using uh, one color. He used Moon Glow to do one and he used Cascade Green to do another. Um, it was quite interesting. 
Okay, so that is the fuchsia. As this dries, um, I'll show it back to you again. You can see, I can see here, the mica. Um, for you to see, it's gonna to have to dry a little bit for you to see it on the camera. And I'm gonna put it in, into water by itself. I have a separate little pot here just for the fuchsite. So I get the mica out of my brush. There we go. And I just have it under the fresh water. Oh, beautiful, 645 in Scotland. What's the weather like in Scotland? Here in Seattle, we were supposed to have a hundred and, 107. I know for some of you that might not seem um, super hot. That might be uh, maybe normal for the summer. I will tell you here in Seattle, we melt when it's 107 degrees. Um, it's not something that we're used to all the time. In fact, I was looking at the, I was looking at the weather and it's supposed to be, it's supposed to stay 80, 81 degrees throughout the night. So pretty interesting. We test something. Lorena, I see you, and Misha, I see you, and Yulia, I see you. Can you just um, go online and say something? I just want to make sure that if you wanted to say something, I could hear you. So, Lorena, can we try you? Can you do you have a speaker that you can say something? There we go. Hi, John. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks. Uh, I am very happy to be here with you, and um, for me it's very interesting. Um, know um, uh, more information about uh, the Primatech. Uh, it's um, fantastic to see the stone, and uh, then uh, the color that uh, born by this stone. Really, really interesting. Awesome! I see the paintings behind you. Those are. Is that your artwork behind you? Yes, this is my work, my very painting. Nice. Very nice, very nice. Yes, this is my studio, my atelier. Oh, fantastic. Yes. So what part, what part of Italy? Excuse me? What part of Italy? We're in Italy? Um, yes, I live in Italy, in the north of Italy. OK, well, thank you yes. for joining today. Huh? Thank you for joining today. Thank you for being here today. Thank you to you. So everybody, if you have a question. Hello from Moscow. Uh, do you hear me? I hear you fine. You have, okay, a, booming, hello. You have a booming voice. <laughs> hello from Moscow. Uh, it's, uh, I have no idea what uh, about Fahrenheit. It's, 36 Celsius uh, here, so it's pretty hot. Uh, we are surviving badly <laughs> in Moscow. Good news, I, I will go vacation next week. Uh, maybe it will be slightly colder than in Moscow. <laughs> so 100 degrees Fahrenheit? Yeah. That's hot. That's hot. That's, That's pretty hot. Uh, the uh, the uh, most uh, the most uh, striking by it, by it is our cat. Uh, he he didn't met uh, such hot in his life. <laughs> well, awesome, Misha. It's good to hear your voice. So the I think the one thing nice about the Zoom is that I'm able not only to see you but I can hear you, which is which is very nice. Ah, uh, uh, let me let me try. Oh, is this better? No, it was it was it was it was great to it was it's been fine. Your your connection is beautiful. Ah, okay. Uh, I, I I'm about picture because it's a camera. Uh, uh, I'm on the balcony because I, I want some fresh air. Uh, so uh, I'm on the balcony and it's quite bad conditions for lightning here. 
Awesome. Well, thank you, Misha. So okay. now I'm gonna. Okay. See ya. So now I'm gonna show you um Sedona, and Sedona. Sedona is from Arizona. I, if you've been to Sedona, it's Red Rock Country. It's very, very beautiful. It's a very beautiful area. And this is this is Sedona. That's what the Sedona looks like. Sedona. The next color I'm going to show you is the bronzite. Bronzite. We have bronzite and we have burnt bronzite. Let's see if I can show this to you. Let's see. Um, it has a lot of, it has mica inside of it. So I can see it here in the, in the pot, I'm trying to move it around so you can see it. So this one does have some, some mica. These dots right here are caused by the paper sizing. It's sizing on the paper. The next one is sugilite. Sugilite is the is almost the same way. I wish behind me and so this is sugilite. Sugilite. This one is called sodalite. Sodalite's very, very popular, very, very popular um, color. Uh, it's a color that uh, George uses. George Politis uses this color. So soda light. A neat way to test these, um, if you're not quite sure which color um, you would use, or is the 238 dot card, because the 238 dot card has the Primatex. It also has the quinacridones, it has the pyrroles, it has the perilines. So you can test a lot of colors out. And that's enough paint for you to be able to um, see the color and the properties of the color. So this one right here is going to be the cyclorite. Cyclorite. Cyclorite can be found in the United States, it can be found in other places, but it can be found in the United States um, up toward Alaska. Cyclorite. Cyclorite. So what comes from Russia? This is, this is actually this right here is from South America. This is bloodstone. And you can see how it's just all over the mineral. And if I took the mineral out and held up my hands, my hands would be red. And there's, there's the mineral, right? That's the mineral. Okay. How is this doing compared to the earlier one? Okay. We are ready to show the color. Yeah, let me do this real quick and I will. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the other one is the Yavapai. Did you 
Oh, here we go. So let me wash this out. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, you use the, the same color, but uh, you uh, use the tube and then uh, me use the half pan. Oh, you're using the half pan. The half pan, so the kind of the order of um, the tubes have more water than the sticks because the sticks have just about no water, very, very little water. And then the pans have the least amount of water. They're the most um, condensed because there's, we take out as much water as we possibly can. Um, but let me show you. Okay. So this is from sketching. This is for sketching, sketching five. And then I'll show you what we've done so far. So one of the questions, go ahead, Giovanni. Most important, I, I squeezed the tube in and I have fans. <laughs> ah. So a question was, how does Sedona compare to the one you showed earlier from Arizona? So the two from Arizona are the Yavapai, Yavapai, and the Sedona. So let's take a look. I have such a great job in front of my fingers. Okay, so the first one is going to be, this is going to be the Yavapai. So that's the Yavapai. And it's called the Yavapai because it comes from Yavapai County. Yavapai County in Arizona. And this is the Sedona. Which is not that far away. And that's the Sedona. Sedona, Yavapai. Um, the Yavapai, uh, both of these I found along the side of the road. Uh, there was a, a cut, they were putting in a road and they cut, um, excavated, and I saw the material and I went outside my car and I, I, I took a little handful of both and brought it back and Ron and I, Ron is the chief chemist, we played with them and these, this is the color of the Yavapai and that's the color of the Sedona. And then uh, we ended up buying from a local excavator who does buildings, et cetera. Uh, we bought the material from him for each one. The, um, we bought this and then we processed this. So that is the, that is the Yavapai. That's the Yavapai. Hello, Besnik. So that's a great question. Um, so Raffaele says bronzite mixed with indigo makes an automatically starry sky. So one thing I'm going to do when I go downstairs, I'm going to put together a, um, a rack of all the colors because it is tough to find a color when you're looking through 260 of them. Otherwise, I would show you that right there because I love the, that, that input in those, those little gifts of information. Okay, so we have two colors left. So if there's something you want to see, even though I might be talking about Primatex or I might be showing you sticks, if there's a question, you know, I'd like to see um, this or that, 
if I have time, if, if you let me know and give me a day or two, I can go through and get that and then show you during the presentation. I'm, I'm super open to do that. I really enjoy it. So don't, don't feel that if we've already gone over something, um, I'm way open to go back and pull those colors and show it to you, okay? I enjoy it. So this one's gonna be serpentine. This is serpentine genuine. And this one is amethyst. So I'm gonna show you amethyst and I'm gonna show you serpentine. So this is an amethyst crystal. That's just one crystal. You can see the, the face of it right here. That's the face. And it's almost like a tooth. It's almost like a dinosaur's tooth. But that's, that is a crystal. And this is, this is the serpentine. And this one was very interesting for me. I really enjoyed this. I, I visited um, our distributor in Australia and um, we went to the actual mine uh, for, for this particular mineral. And it was just, it was just great, um, great to go there. So here we go. So one thing I've seen in my in my travels, um, I don't know if any of you have tried this, uh, but people have put dots on paper, and then they travel with that. So because through security, it's easy to walk through security, and you have enough to to paint with in the airport while you're waiting. I've seen put people have uh, paper around their wrists with little tiny pieces of watercolor with a, a dot. And they'll take the color off and paint with that. So you can have 20 or 30 colors just on your wrist. And it's enough to pass the time, you know, while waiting for a plane. And um, so you guys are really super clever. Okay, that's the green. That's the actually, that's the serpentine. And then this, this is the amethyst. For one of you, some of you, this might be your birthstone because amethyst is a birthstone as well. That's amethyst. So, this is the serpentine. So that way, yeah. serpentine, and this is the amethyst. I'm not sure what those look like. So there's the amethyst, and there's the serpentine. Now here it's a super. Um, it almost looks like if I was going to compare it to another color, I would say almost kind of like a spring green, um, but that's not how it turns out here on the on the paper. You get a lot of granulation. Oh, so Valerie says Yavapai is the indigenous peoples of the region. It means people of the sun. That's awesome. So those are the 18 I wanted to show you today. Do you have any, any questions to answer?
we have a couple more minutes and I have a piece of paper. So why don't we go over three, let me pick out three more colors to show you. Show you jadeite, Thomas Schuller uses jadeite quite a bit, Amazonite, and the first one that we use, which is the lapis. So you got lapis. I'll show you each one. This, this is lapis, right there, that's lapis, so that's that, lapis, and here I'll show you something else, you might like this. Okay. I kept this one. I kept this one for myself. I couldn't. There. So. That's a big. Yeah. Heavy that's weight. A, that's, that's how big it is. It's, it's off the table. There we go. There. Actually, I can't get it close enough to show you how big it is. It, it's, it's quite huge. Yeah. I want a such big stone at my home. <laughs> yeah. It's about, it's about 40 pounds. So, and the biggest pieces I've ever seen are as big as a car. So they're big. And what we try to do is we try to buy um, the, the waste um, where they made, try to make a, um, pens or pencils or, 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 or things of that nature. We buy this, the small pieces. Um, but I was there, so I, I got this one because it's just, it's such a beautiful color. Um, these are both, these are both Chilean. This is um, natural and this is polished. This is polished lapis. So let me move out of the way and get, so it, it's huge. All right. Yeah. Good for press the paper. So as a paperweight. Yeah. Your paperweight, John. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a different type of paperweight. Okay, so let me show you the the jadeite. So we look at jadeite. Do you have that, Giovanni? Yeah. You have already done the jadeite. You've already done it? All right. Yes. Oh yeah. So there's the jadeite. John, there's a question from Lynn. What is the purple color? I just had to go away for a minute. Oh, I think the... <laughs> no, this right here is, this is the, should be the sujolite. Is it the purpurite or the sujolite? Oh, I think it's the. Yeah, she's referring uh, to that color. This one here. Sujolite, yes. Yeah, sujolite. So this is actually the jadeite. This one, and so really, there's no such thing as as jade. We we call the the beautiful jewelry and necklaces. We call that jade. But the two things are jadeite and nephrite, and those are the minerals. 
And so that's why someone would say, well, I'm wearing jade and it's white, or I'm wearing jade and it's a very light green, it has all those different colors because jade in is just a generalization of nephrite and or jadeite. Very pretty. The neat thing about the, if I put this against my face, you can't see me putting it against my face, but it's it's a very it's a very cool mineral. Even in, even in the super hot days, if you put it against your face, it's very cool. It's, it's kind of interesting. Okay, and so the, the next one we have is the Amazonite. Amazonite. So this is the Amazonite. And that's Amazonite, Amazonite. And then the last one is the lapis. So the lapis looks really very, very blue here, but when I put on the paper, it's actually a baby blue. It's a, it's a very, And it's about, we stop at when it's about 80% is where we stop. Um, so you can see, it's a very light blue, very dark here, very light here. And that's because, the, you know, to get it to 90%, the price is just extreme when it comes to the lapis because you have to concentrate it so much and there's a reason that um, the two synthetic forms ultramarine and french ultramarine they're about eight dollars a kilo um, at 80 percent you're talking fifteen hundred dollars plus per kilo so if you wanted really 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 blue you could use the synthetic form which is the ultramarine or the french ultramarine Ultramarine is probably my favorite color. I mean, it's just a beautiful, beautiful blue, in my opinion. If you want to use um, what the masters used, then the lapis is a good way to go. People ask me, you know, John, I went to a museum and I looked up on the, the paintings and they use lapis and it's, it's so, so dark blue. And it is. And, you, and the interesting thing, if you look and remember back at that time, um, it was either the government, it was uh, kings and queens, or, or the church, people with exceptional wealth that were using the lapis. Because the lapis back then had the same value as gold. The gold and lapis were the same. So what it showed, it showed the person that was using that really dark, dark lapis was very, very wealthy. It was, it was telling the world, you're seeing that I'm wealthy because I'm using something that is, is the cost of gold. Um, but if you want to paint with lapis, this is lapis. It's, 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 it's about close to 80%, 77 to 80%. Past, the, past that, it gets too expensive. Um, and if you want really, really, really blue, then you know, use the French ultramarine or the ultramarine. They're, they're, they're quite beautiful. They're synthetic, but they're quite beautiful. And they're, I'm sure if not many of you, if not all of you don't have an ultramarine in, in your palette because they're just awesome colors. So with that, I wanted to say thank you so much. Lorena, thank you. Giovanni, thank you. Misha, thank you. Yulia, um, Angela is I think right now, um, uh, translating for any of the Spanish viewers. Thank all of you for, I appreciate you coming on and being with me today. Um, as we do this, please have your questions. I'd love to hear your voice. You have beautiful voices. So, um, and I'm open to answer your questions. I will have an artist once a week. That way you can see it from a practical standpoint, which would be nice. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I wish you health and look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Grazie. Bye -bye.